guys uh, that was just a little bit of the basic playing that you can do with uh, with just knowing your pentatonics and some of the chords uh, up the neck and how those connect I'm gonna show you a little bit uh, of that in just a second to to be able to uh, really 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 get down to the basic fundamentals of, of how the chord shapes and the pentatonics and stuff are, are connected now I know I talk about getting out of pentatonic prison all the time but you have to be in prison to be able to get out of it. So we need to we, we need to know these fundamentals, and I'm going to keep pushing up on knowing the chord shapes and stuff like that. Uh, but before that, you know, I'm going to have to give you a little bit of an update of what's been going on. Man, it has been absolutely unbelievable. I know I talked about Miami Beach. Um, we had a fantastic vacation down there. It was just over the top, and and the perfect balance of 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 fun party stuff and uh, cruising on the beach and just doing the whole thing. It was amazing, uh, five stars, uh, definitely highly recommend that if you can. Um, and then um, back to Nashville for a pretty leisurely week, which was nice, a little, almost a little vacation uh, from the vacation, which is always good. Um, and then, man, we geared right up to, uh, to heading uh, up to New York City and we went up and did two uh, I know I showed some footage, uh, shared some footage of that. We went up and did uh, two nights up there for the first time playing in New York City under my own name with the band and the original music. And uh, we sold out two nights at the Bitter End, Tuesday and Wednesday. I know a lot of you guys were there. You know who you are. Thanks so much, uh, Jim, for the hats. Um, uh, sold a bunch of merch. We had some uh, limited run of t-shirts made for that show, uh, those shows. And um, that was fantastic. Just had an amazing time in New York. Stayed at, at uh, my favorite hotel there, uh, the Soho Grand Hotel. Ran into Dave Chappelle on the sidewalk in front of the hotel. He was staying there for four days. He's been staying at that uh, hotel apparently for 27 years, which is pretty amazing. Uh, just a great, I love that part of town, the West Village, Soho. That whole area down there is just incredible. Um, and people that go to New York City that don't get to see that area and just hang out in Midtown and Times Square, I think they're really missing out because... It's a different feel. It's a different vibe. It's more. It's more laid back. It's more our scene, um, but just an amazing place. Every time I go to New York City, it gets bigger, and I've been going there regularly since I was 18 years old. But um, but man, it's just there's nowhere like it on planet Earth. I mean, you, you know, a lot of people hate it. Uh, a lot of people will never leave there because they love it so much. Um, I love to visit New York and I love to play music there. I've always had great conversations with people. I don't find New York New Yorkers to be assholes. I just think they're in a hurry, uh, and 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 it's it, it it. I find the people to be um, uh, passionate and excited and upbeat and 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 confident and just badasses, man. It's an it's an awesome place for as far as I'm concerned. I love going up there, and we're going back July 16th and 17th. We're doing two more uh, nights at the at the um, at the bitter end. Uh, looking forward to playing with Sean Camp and Leapers Fork here in Nashville, April 12th. Can't wait to play the Sean Camp 
uh, songs again. He's a, uh, just absolutely one of the most, you know, world class talents that that's that's alive today. And I'm lucky to get to play uh, with him. And so um, a clinic. Don't forget about the clinic in um, in Ohio, April 19th and 20th in Cincinnati. We've got the clinic with the um, music salon. Don't forget about that. That's going to be. Um, uh, a great clinic. There's still uh, some spots left on there. I think uh, there's about two or three spots left uh, for that. But um, but please check that stuff out. Thanks so much for all the support. It's been unbelievable. It has been an absolutely, totally inspiring three weeks. Um, and I mean, I'm living in some kind of fantasy world because it just keeps getting better. And, um, and we keep working harder and I guess it's working. But um, but thanks a bunch, guys. And so, so look, let me show you a couple little things here. So, starting with the G shape in the key of G, you got to know the information in these chords in every shape m moving up the fingerboard. And so, I mean, we got to learn them um, vertically and horizontally. So, if I'm playing a G here, I need, I need to know my pentatonic. My arpeggio, major scale, in that shape, and then I need to go to the the, the, the next shape, the the um, the D shape. That's the arpeggio. Here's the pentatonic. Here's the major scale. Right, so let's just stop there. That, and then here's your open chord. There's the pentat. So those three shapes, just connecting those. And let's forget about the cowboy chords. We, we want to work with the closed position chord shapes because we're trying to get up the neck and, and not get lost up the neck. And this is exactly how you do it. This is exactly what changed my life when I was 12 or 13 years old and I was stuck playing bluegrass songs trying to figure out how to get, gain the sounds of the people I heard on records like Tony Rice and Jerry Douglas and Sam Bush and Bela Fleck and Mark O'Connor and David Grisman and... Uh, Vassar Clements and all these people that were uh, David Greer, all these amazing uh, guitar players, as well as all the jazz and blues and rock guys. So I couldn't figure it out because I didn't know my 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 foundation, uh, which is the chord. Everything, any lead guitar you've ever heard has come from, uh, if they're in the right key and it sounds good, it came from the chord. Uh, whether you know it or or want to believe it or not, or if, even if they knew it, then that, that's where it came from, though. So uh, we got to know that information in these shapes because if your if your if your C uh, shape G chord is here, and your C chord E shape is here, and your five your D chord G shape is here, well then those tight little harmonies, these little triads. play through and, and uh, the chords that are going on in the progression of the song and that's when the guitar fingerboard really really starts to open up uh, so I just wanted to kind of after all the craziness that's been going on the past couple weeks I just want to come in here and have a little refresher on how important this stuff really is uh, and the thing I played at the beginning of the video was just to show you that it doesn't have to be complicated to sound like music it doesn't. It's just a little phrase. That's music, right? It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, 
It just has to make sense and say something. It is a language. It is communicating through this instrument. When you pick up the instrument, try to make music. Just don't noodle around and make noise and, and do stuff. Try to take what you know and make as much music uh, from your personality and your emotion that you that you can. So that's the point of all this. And so um, we're trying to say something. And so um, connecting these two shapes, if I start on my with my first finger on this bar chord and, and the other thing about this is the hand position if I'm not in the right hand position I'm not gonna be able to play any of that and so I need to be in the right hand position which is why another very crucial point of the chord inversions the cage system is so important um, and so again, starting here in the the, uh, the the E shape G bar chord, first finger, third finger, whole step. Then I slide up. As soon as I slide up, I'm in the I'm in that D, the D shape. So if I go. octave so one two three one two three you know that's the same thing three times so that right there you don't have to work at it too hard when I slide up again first finger now up to here now I'm in my C shape G chord so already I've covered one two I'm in the third shape already and I'm still just playing the pentatonic my hands are landing right where they're supposed to when I use the right fingering and, and stay in the in the shape the pattern now right there I'm gonna switch to my first finger because I'm gonna slide up to the third again there to go to the a shape so as soon as I slide in there, I'm in the A shape. And if I slide all the way up to the root, there's the G shape just repeating itself. Now try going back down. There's the A shape. There's the C shape. same thing for the C chord. Here's your A shape. Going right to C. So A shape. Now, now we're in the G shape. So now we're in the E shape. So That you, that you have to have these fundamentals in. So um, if I was to go to the D chord, right? Here's the D chord, same exact thing. I can start on the five like I did on C. Forgot to mention that, I started on G. So if I'm in D, go to the five chord of the G we're in. We've done G, C, now we're gonna go to D. Shape. Same as the C thing, just up a um, whole step. That's the D shape. So what happens 
is once you have that foundation, this is the framework. The cord is the concrete slab. The pentatonic is the is the um, is the two by fours, the framing. Um, the uh, arpeggio. Uh, uh, sorry, let me take that back. The cord is the uh, the foundation, the concrete slab. The arpeggio is the framework, and then the the uh, pentatonic is the sheetrock, and then the major scale is the wallpaper, and then improvising is the artwork and the furniture. And so it's it's literally in that sequence. And so you have to have this framework to be able to see how the chord is built around the proper hand shape position and the basic fundamentals of playing the guitar. Uh, I could go on and on and on and on and on about this, but but just check that out. And don't forget, target the chord tones. level you can uh, add the four in there that is a great phrasing lesson because that takes you right to the money note which is the chord tone if I'm in a big G chord here here's the exercise time. One, two, three. Skip over the natural seven, just go right to the tonic, right? In the right hand position. Back down. It works everywhere. Go to the uh, D shape. That's it for today. Uh, check out all the private lessons, the immersion experiences, all the courses, everything below. The tip jug, much appreciated. That helps out. Uh, it's a. Uh, it, it takes a. What did Dolly Parton say? It, it, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap. Um, but anyway, th hey, thank you so much. Appreciate you guys. We got a great community here going. It's all working. Uh, we're learning together, and I'm signing off for now. But I'll be back on uh, in, a, in a couple days. Thanks a million, guys. All right. Cheers.